Greetings. I'm Sandra Drew, also known as Janaki of Aquarius School for Kids, an oasis of early learning with the African child in mind. I want to welcome you once again to our story time, uh, where we get to gather together and get to learn about our culture and learn about reading and learn about books and all those wonderful things that have to do with literacy. Today we are going to return to a book that we read last time and our lesson is going to be taken from our manual, our manual that says the fall cycle we celebrate the harvest, Marvelous Me Unit 1. This comes from our African-centered kindergarten curriculum available at Aquarius School for Kids. That's www.aquariusschoolforkids.com. You can go online and you can book a call with us. And if you are interested in learning about our African-centered curriculum, we encourage you to book a consultation call. And in our consultation call, I'll tell you a bit more about our program and you can decide whether or not what we have is the right fit for you and whether you are the right fit for us. So um, once we are finished with our story time under our listening tree, I want you to go ahead, parents, educators, teachers, whoever may, adults in the room that may be listening, I want you to go over to www.aquariusschoolforkids.com and book your consultation call with us so that we can discuss our African-centered kindergarten curriculum. And this curriculum is available right now for 2020-2021 school year. So you don't want to be slow about it. You want to be one of the first ones to receive our curriculum. So I look forward to hearing from you. So. Without any further ado, let's get into our reading for today. Uh, I want us to relax a bit, kids, move on up to the screen, whether you're watching it on your um, SmartCast TV, or you're watching it on the telephone or the cell phone, if you're watching it on your computer, I want you to get in a nice space. And we're gonna all gather together underneath our listening tree. Now the listening tree is where we hear lots of stories songs and poetry and everything that has to do with remembrance. Now we are going to review the parts of the book that we have learned so far. Let's see what you remember. What is this called? Very good. This is called the front cover of the book. Let me turn it around. What is this called? Yes, this is called the back cover of the book. Very good. And if I turn it this way to the side, what is that called? Very good. It is called the spine. Very good. So we have the front cover, the back cover, and we have the spine. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Now today we are going to answer some very important questions about the key details in our text. And as you know, key details are just, that's just a fancy way of saying very important stuff. Now, during the reading of today's story or text, I will stop and ask you questions about the text and you will answer them. Now, text is just a fancy way of talking about the written words of the story. Repeat after me. I can answer questions about key details in a text. Very good. You know what I'm going to do, right? Yes, yes, yes. I want to do my beat. Let's see if we can say it together. Okay, get ready and go. I can answer questions about key details in a text. Hey, hey. I can answer questions about key details in the text. Hey, hey. Good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay. Yes. Today, you are going to answer questions about key details in a text. Very good. Now, people all around the world love to hear stories. Sometimes we hear stories from books. Sometimes we hear stories on the radio or even on TV. Sometimes we listen to stories from storytellers. Storytellers tell stories from their memories. In West Africa, there are special storytellers. Now, what are these special storytellers called? You are absolutely right. They are called griots. Say it, griot. Very good, very good. Now, a griot, as you already know, is a traveling historian, poet, musician, and storyteller in West Africa. Griots are very, very intelligent. 
and they can remember stories from way back in the past. They keep their community's history and culture alive. Now, griots have to be very good listeners in order to remember so much. Now, today, I want you to be good listeners, okay? And I'm going to read from the book that we looked at the last time. Now, this book, as you know, is a special kind of book. Who remembers what kind of book this is? Okay, very good. This book is an informational book. It's called an informational book because it is filled with lots of facts. It is filled with information that is true. It is not a made up story. It is not an imaginary story. It is not a fiction story. Now, what is a fiction story? What does that mean? Very good. Fiction means that the story is imaginary. It is made up. It's something that we put together out of our imaginations, okay? Like one of the stories we read before. We read this before. Who remembers this? Yes, we read Marvelous Me. And Marvelous Me was a fiction story. It was not an informational text. It was a story that was made up. Now, today's story, like I said, is not made up. It is non Fiction. It is not fiction. It is a non-fiction story. Can you say non-fiction? Very good. Non-fiction. Very, very good. Now, let's take a look at the cover. Can you describe again for me what you see on the cover? We did it the last time. Tell me what you see. Very good. I see words. I also see some pictures. Now you see, good readers like to do that. Good readers look at the cover of a story to get an idea of what the story may be about. And they kind of guess what it might be about based on what, they've, what they see on the cover. Now the title of this story is Secrets of the Afro Comb, 6,000 Years of Art and Culture. Now this title gives me a clue of what the story will probably be about. This story will probably be about an Afro comb because I can tell from the title. And it also says 6,000 years of art and culture. So this story will have something to do with art and culture, which is a people's way of life. Also, I see a barber and he is cutting or shaping this boy's hair. So, hmm, it might have something to do with hair. And I also see a beautiful lady, and she also has a full head of beautiful hair. So that makes me think, that makes me guess, that makes me predict that this story may be about hair. This story may be about something to do with Africa. This story may have to do about may be about combs, okay? So that's what a good reader would do. A good reader looks at the cover and tries to guess or predict what the story will be about. Now, we read quite a bit of this story already on the last time we were together. And we saw the quote in the beginning when we opened our book. And the quote said, if the lion does not tell his story, the hunter will. Now, what does that mean? If the lion does not tell his story, the hunter will. Okay. Very good. See, the lion and the hunter have a particular relationship. The hunter is trying to get the lion. But the lion has his side to the story. And if the lion doesn't tell his story, the hunter is going to tell his version of the story. It's the same thing with us as an African people. If we don't tell our stories ourselves, somebody else is going to tell our story. It can be somebody who's an enemy to us as a people, and they're going to decide what our story is about. So it is important that we tell our own stories. I will tell my own story. I want you to say that. I will tell my own story. Very, very good. As we read our book the last time, let's see. We came to, well, let me not skip over this part. We came to something called the title page. I showed you the title page. Then I also showed you the table of contents. 
And that just tells me what's inside the book, the table of contents. And then I showed you a section of the book called the introduction. It had a heading and the heading said introduction. And we had some questions that kind of introduced us um, into what the story would be about. And then we started a little bit of reading. If you remember the young man from the Sudan and how he had an Afro comb in his hair. You remember that part? Okay. And we talked about how the Afro comb can be very decorative and how it can tell about a, a people's culture and their politics and their lives just from looking at designs on the Afro comb. Okay. Now, I also said that this is a very, very lengthy book. So I'm not going to read the entire story in just one sitting, not even in two sittings. It's going to take many sittings for us to finish the story. So today, I just want to read a tiny portion of the story. We're just going to continue with what we started the last time. Okay. So let me look at my nice trusty book, my lesson book, to get to our right portion, to our story. And before I start reading, I want us to get up and just take a wiggle break, okay? And then we're going to continue with our story and our questions, okay? Y'all ready? All right. Repeat after me. Everybody stand up. All right. You ready? And let's get our wiggle break. And go. Wiggle, 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 break. 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 Wiggle up, wiggle down, wiggle to the left, wiggle to the right. Are you feeling out of sight? Yes, I'm feeling out of sight. Wiggle, 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 break. Wiggle, 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 break. Wiggle, wiggle down, wiggle, wiggle down, wiggle, wiggle down to the ground, down to the ground, hey, down to the ground. All right. All right, everybody. Now sit down, crisscross applesauce. You can move on up a little closer to the screen. Very good. Relax. And let's hear some more about our story. The title of this story is The Secrets of the Afro Comb, 6,000 Years of Art and Culture. What is the title of this story? Good. Secrets of the Afro Comb, 6,000 Years of Art and Culture. It was written by Ki N. Chimbiri. She is the author of the story. The author writes the words. So K. N. Chimbiri wrote the words. The author writes the words. What does the author do? Very good. The author writes the words. Very good. Now, I want us to continue with our story. I'm going to pick up on this part where we said, what is an African comb? We already read that. This is a heading and it says, what is an African comb? So we're going to do a little review, a little repeat on this part. There are many different kinds of African combs. In the past, African people wore a lot of different hairstyles and they needed to use different combs to create them. People with African hair type have a variety of hair textures. And that's also why different types of combs were found there. Combs were made to suit the hairstyle and the hair. Have you ever heard of an African comb or an Afro comb? Afro comb is one type of African comb. Look at these two Afro combs. Can you guess which one was made thousands of years ago? Very good. This comb is a modern day comb. In fact, it's made of plastic. You notice it has a fist on the end. And this comb was made thousands and thousands of years ago. And you notice it also has a handle just like this comb, but the handle of this comb is a bird, okay? Very, very good. Now the comb on the left, as I showed you, this is the left, is made of plastic. These combs were popular in modern times. When we say modern, we're talking about around our time, my mommy's time, modern times. Not way, way, way back in the past. But these combs were popular in modern times when people of African descent began to want more political power. So what they're talking about is black people. 
people who are descended from African people, we looked around the world and we saw that other people were controlling our lives. Non-African people were controlling our lives. To be more specific, European people were controlling our lives and we wanted power over our own lives. So people of African descent wanted more political power. This movement was called Black Power. Can you say that? Black Power. Very good. In fact, when you say it, I want you to put your fist up in the air just like this, kind of like the cone. And I want you to say black power. Black power. Wow, you sound like our brothers and sisters of the past, the way you say black power. Anyway, the movement was called Black Power. It began in the United States of America in the 1960s and quickly spread to other countries where people of African descent lived. And I actually have an Afrocomb right here. I showed it to you last time. It looks very similar to the one in the book. The only difference is I don't have an Afro fist. I don't have a fist on the end. Maybe next time I can find one with a fist on the end. Now the Afro comb is an ancient style of comb. The little one to the right was made in ancient Egypt. It was made in ancient Egypt. And we talked about Egypt a little bit the last time. At least I showed you where it was on the map. It was made in ancient Egypt about 5,000 years ago. It wasn't called an Afro comb then. That's our name for it today. Afro combs are just perfect for combing African hair because they have long teeth with wide gaps between them. Hmm, let me put my little book down. Let's take a look. So here's the Afro comb. Ooh, these teeth are quite long. And see they have wide gaps and a gap is a space between them. I wonder why they're made like this. Well, let's read on to find out. These white teeth are just right for African hair because they don't snag and break the hair. African hair can be fragile and brittle and the long teeth are great for untangling the hair. Oh, so that's why the comb is made that way. Our African hair it's strong, but at the same time, it can be very fragile. I know that sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. So we have to be careful with our beautiful African hair. So that's why when we have our picks, it has the wide comb. Oh, it went through so easily. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Wow. Oh, how beautiful. I love it. I love, I love it. Don't you love it? Go ahead and touch your beautiful African hair. All right. Now, about this book. This book is full of African combs made over the last 6,000 years. They are shown roughly in the date order that they were created. So you can see how ideas, beliefs, and styles have changed over time. Now, I want to stop right here and ask you a few questions. Hmm. Now, in what country was an Afro comb found 5,000 years ago? Let me see if you were listening. Oh, very good, very good. It was found in the country of Egypt. Do you remember where Egypt is? Well, tell you what, I'm just gonna bring my map out. There it is, there's Egypt. Go ahead and wave at Egypt. All right, I'm gonna take my map back. Say bye, Egypt. All right, my map is back out. All right. Now, how are African combs designed? That means how were the combs made? Hmm, who remembers? Right, right, very good. They are designed with long teeth and wide gaps. And why are they designed this way? Why are the teeth real short and then no gaps in between? Why is it not made that way? Very good, very good. Our hair, it's delicate, fragile, it can break. And we have to be very careful with our hair. So we have to make sure we have the type of comb 
that will that we can comb through our hair very easily with and the afro comb does that for us and it did the same thing for the ancient egyptians as well now speaking of the ancient egyptians i want you to think about this now we as african people black people we use the african afro comb today for our hair now if the afro comb was made in egypt 5000 years ago what does that say about us and ancient Egyptians. Wow, I mean, I'm an African person, I'm a black person, and I have Afro hair, and I use an Afro comb, and the ancient Egyptians had it 5,000 years ago. I wonder what that means about ancient Egyptians and me. You know what? The ancient Egyptians must have looked just like me. Wow. People in ancient Egypt look just like me. I think I want to take a look at that map again. Yeah. Ancient Egyptians. But if Egypt is right on the continent of Africa, of course they look like me. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Just by studying about a comb, I learned all, so much about me and ancient Egyptians already. Wow. I think that's amazing. Whew. I learned so much just by reading those two pages. You know what? Let's go ahead and give the author, K.N. Chimbiri, a round of applause for giving us, us this wonderful inf information. Give her a round of applause. Very, very good. Very, very good. So I'm going to end right here because the next time we come together, we are going to go to another section in the book. And remember, I said this is a long book. And the other section of the book, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. Looks just like this. It is actually a chapter in the book. And a chapter is just the way that a book is divided up. And I'll tell you more about that next time. I don't want to bog you down with too much information. All right. But this is an informational book, right? Informational book. So, anywho, the next time we come together, we're going to look at the next, the, the first chapter in the book. We already went through the introduction that told us a little bit about this book, and then we're going to get into the chapter. All right. But I want to thank you so much for sitting with me today during our quick story time and sitting together underneath our listening tree and learning many things about our Afro comb, which was made in Egypt over 5,000 years ago. And as we know, Egypt is in Africa, as we saw on the map. And also, I want to say thank you, not only to our children who listen today, but to our parents and our educators who took the time to sit here with our beautiful Black ones to learn more about ourselves. Okay, and I want to remind you once again about our manual, our fall cycle. We celebrate the harvest. It's the fall um, cycle manual unit one marvelous me this is the first site the first book in the whole fall cycle series in fact there are five books and if i look show you the back cover you'll see all of the different uh, manuals that are available with this um fall cycle curriculum okay for african-centered kindergarten curriculum and I, like i said before you can Go to our website, which is www.aquariusschoolforkids.com, and you can book a consultation call with us. If you're interested, you can talk about our African-centered kindergarten curriculum and how you can secure a copy for yourself, whether you're a homeschool parent or whether you are in the educational field in a private institution or public institution. We can talk about that to see if this is the right fit for you. If you are not ready as of yet to um, invest in this wonderful curriculum, that's my stuff. It fell on the ground. If you're not ready as of yet to invest in that, just take some time out and invest in this wonderful book before I let you go. I'm going to teach you myself seven tips for bringing out the reader in your black child. It will give you some wonderful tips on how to teach your child how to read. It is a quick and easy read and it's filled with lots of information that you can use right away. And in addition to that, you would like to get um, our companion workbook, which has the same name, Before I Let You Go, I'm going to teach you myself. That's our workbook, and it's filled with the letters of the alphabet, 
and different symbols and positive things. Like here we have for the letter that represents the sound ah. Uh, we have a picture of an obelisk, okay? And your wonderful scholar gets to trace that letter. And then they also get to draw and write where the sentence is, I see the obelisk, okay? So it is an African-centered um, text. We strive to be culturally relevant at Aquarius School for Kids, as well as academically rigorous with our materials. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today for our story time. Make sure you visit with us online at www.aquariusschoolforkids.com. You can also go to Instagram at Aquarius School for Kids, Facebook at Aquarius School for Kids, and of course, YouTube at Aquarius School for Kids. Any platform that you like to use, um, we are there just for you. So this is all that we have for today. And I look forward to the next time that we come together for our story time to learn more about ourselves as African people. So to my parents and my children, I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. And I look forward to working with you again. Take care.